If you are a real estate investor or you want to be a real estate investor and you want money and funding for your deals, regardless of your credit, regardless of your experience or your income, don't go anywhere. I'm getting ready to plug you into the money and funding for your deals. Welcome to the Jay Connor Show. I'm Jay Connor, broadcast from Eastern North Carolina. And my co-host here on the show is Chaffee Wynn. Hello, Chaffee. How's it going? Hello, Jay. Awesome. How are you doing? Doing fantastic. Thank you for joining me back here on another episode for the show. Absolutely. Excited to be here. Absolutely. So folks, as I promised uh, just a second ago when we opened up this show, I'm going to plug you into the money to get funding for real estate deals. But first, before I do that, let me tell you, here's what we do on the Jay Connor Show. We talk about real estate investing, talk about single family houses, talk about commercial deals as well. And we also talk about the personal development and mindset. If you don't own the real estate between your ears, you will not ever own any other real estate outside of your ears. So here's what we do on the show. Uh, we have questions sent in ahead of time from previous shows where people have commented. But uh, before we jump right in, Chaffee, let's ask everybody to do something as we always do. First of all, on YouTube, if you are watching us on YouTube, first of all, subscribe to the channel here so you don't miss any of the future episodes. Secondly, uh, give us a like, give us a thumbs up. You know, if you get some material today that's really meaningful to you. And also, we love to hear, don't we, Chaffee, where everybody is tuning in from. So, of course, we got your username, but just put in your city and state where you're tuning in from. Also, you can post questions in the comment bar as well below, and we'll get your questions answered in the upcoming uh, episodes. Now, if you are tuning in and listening on iTunes, of course, again, subscribe so you don't miss any of the following episodes. Secondly, we would love for you to rate the show. We appreciate that. That'll keep us motivated to keep bringing you the uh, information. And also, uh, please leave us a review at the, uh, at the end of the show as well. So, Chaffee, we promised right up front we'd plug them in. So let's plug them in. So awesome. I've got an, I got an online class right now, free online class waiting for you to go get the information, five steps, how to get funding for your deals, regardless of your credit income or experience. And here is the URL address. It's www.jayconner.com forward slash money podcast, money podcast. So Chaffee and Jay, yes. not only do they get huge value from listening to that training, if they listen all the way to the end, you're giving them an extra special something, aren't you? Absolutely. So at the end of the class, uh, everybody, Chaffee and I offer a free strategy session. All right. So what happens in the strategy session? Of course, this happens over the telephone, but you may have some challenges, may have some obstacles, may not have a path really in mind on where you want to go in your business. And this strategy session can help you, whether you're in real estate investing or you're in any kind of business. Quite frankly, we do the personal development and mind and mindset coaching as well. So uh, thank you, Chevy, for reminding me of that. Y'all go to jayconnor.com forward slash money podcast. At the end of that, you'll uh, we'll plug you in on also uh, how to take advantage of a free strategy session. Chaffee, on the previous episode, I went first. Let me let you go first this time. Well, the, for the folks that have not met you before, who in the world is Chaffee Wynn and, um, and how do we know each other? Well, I uh, am here in Chicago. I've been here for over 20, uh, 20 years, and uh, I started my career uh, following the mantra, which uh, a lot of people grow up with, which is go to school, get good grades, and get a job. And so, hey, that's what I was taught. That's what I did. And so I went to school, went to the University of Illinois, got an engineering degree, got good grades, graduated, and got a good job. So I worked at a uh, tech company for over. Uh, 11 years, and found out that I wasn't really passionate about it. Found out that it wasn't really going to get me where I wanted to go in life. And uh, now, it, now it didn't take you 11 years to figure that out, did it? 
<laughs> it took me about a day. <laughs> <laughs> I was like me in the restaurant business. When I got out of college, I went straight into the restaurant business. And I mean, somebody else's business, not mine. And, and, and so I was going to have them teach me the real estate. I mean, the um, restaurant business. I'm telling you, like you, Chappie. I mean, it's like within 30 days, really, I knew I just hated what I was doing. And I tell you what, I learned a really important life lesson. I mean, it my ego wouldn't let me quit. Absolutely. My, ego, my ego would let me quit because I was so concerned about what other people thought about me. And I didn't want to be viewed as a quitter. It took me two years to quit. Okay. But anyway, back, back well, to you. Well, it's not just not knowing, not allowing yourself to quit. It's you, you get into this program of that's what we're supposed to do. Right. And, and so that's what I thought I was supposed to do. Mm. But in reality, you're not supposed to do anything except what you're really passionate about and figure out what, what that is. I mean, I'm going to talk about that the last episode as well, finding what you're passionate about. So and so, you know, what I ended up doing was I started investing in real estate way back in the day. In 2002 was when I started. And I started investing in multiple different states, multiple different strategies. And eventually that led me to a path to what I'm really uh, passionate about and what I'm doing now, which is success coaching. So I love helping people grow their business. I love helping people open their eyes to the possibilities to reach their highest potential and to uh, continue to live life to the fullest. Versus just going through the daily routine that most people go through. That, uh, through that process, I ended up meeting you about nine years ago, I guess, a little bit over nine years. And yep. uh, we just hit it off. And, you know, sometimes when you just meet that individual and you make that connection, something about you stood out uh, and it, it, it continues to stand out. And what, what's funny, though, is that I thought that that connection that we had was unique and special, I guess. <laughs> and it is, don't get me wrong. Sure. And then I find out when I'm at your live events and I'm talking to a lot of the students, they have the exact same experience with you as well. So, <laughs> so, so Jay, you have that unique ability to connect with people right away. So um, yeah. thank you for that right. connection, by the way. <laughs> thank you. Well, of course you do as well. And, you know, here on the show, we talk about real estate investing. We talk about personal development and so, Chavi, how many years now have you been, a, you know, a success business coach? So it's uh, been over a decade. I've been uh, coaching for over a decade. And, and like I said, it started with real estate. I started doing well in real estate. People started asking you some questions on how to do things. And I found out I really liked helping people. I really liked helping people succeed, helping people do deals and, you know, make money and, and find their passion. And that led me into personal development and coaching. And uh, that's what I've been doing for the past decade now. Well, and that's probably another foundational reason as to why we connected. I mean, clearly, both of us have got a servant's heart. That's what it's all about. We're on the, I mean, our, our filter, our view of this world is we are here to serve others. And it's really cool when, you know, you have the opportunity to serve others. And, you know, you're getting compensated for something that you absolutely love to do. And so I think the servant's heart thing is, you know, one thing that we really uh, connected on. And I tell you what, Chavi, just to let everybody know, what do we have down here for this episode today that we're going to talk about? Because I, I want to give just a just to take another moment for background, but I don't I, I want people to stick around for what we're going to talk about here in the show. Well, Jay, today, a couple of things. First of all, it's really what what um, why you love using private money is what we're going to talk about. And diving further into that, I, we kind of touched about in the last episode, which is how to get paid multiple times using private money. Uh, exactly. And I think I uh, kind of, uh, again, dove right into that only. So stick around. We're going to talk about all those reasons and, and how to, like I said, more importantly, not only how to get the money, only how to get the money in your pocket. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And I'd like to take just a moment for those that may be new to the show and just, you know, tuning in or listening, just a little bit about myself and why I'm qualified to be on here to give this information. My wife, Carol Joy, and I, we've been uh, investing in real estate, as you know, Chappie, for the past 15 years. We rehab now almost 400 houses. Of course, in this world of real estate investing, you don't have to rehab. You know, that, that's just a choice, uh, you know, that, that we've made. But when we started out investing in real estate, 
15 years ago, I was relying on the local banks. And then nine and a half years ago, as of this show's date, I was cut off with no notice. No, no, I mean, boom. And of course, everybody was cut off, right? <laughs> Between 2008 and 2009. And I was introduced to this wonderful world of private money. So since that time, we've never missed out on a deal because we haven't had the money to do the deal. Seven years ago or so, I got bored because we have the business on automatic. We use virtual assistants. In fact, Chaffee, we should do a show on using virtual assistants and how we automate the business, you know, down the road a little bit. But I got bored seven and a half years ago. And, you know, I enjoyed making a difference. I still do making a difference in people's lives in the real estate investing business, you know, helping people that are needing to sell quickly, you know, those that are needing to buy and aren't, don't have a, they can't get a mortgage and et cetera. But, you know, I was working in the business, you know, what, five hours a week, just making decisions. And so a mentor of mine, suggested, I mean, I went to him, I said, you know, what am I going to do? What's next? He says, teach what you know and what you're passionate about. And so Chaffee, you discovered, or you started putting into practice 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. I started putting into practice seven and a half years ago, training, teaching, motivating other people that wanted to really get involved in real estate investing. And I tell you, Carol Joy and I together, have really found our passion in making just huge differences in people's lives. I mean, you know, working with a brand new real estate investor, I mean, nothing thrills me more than working with a brand new real estate investor or a seasoned real estate investor and seeing them go from where they are, whether it's no deals or just a few deals. And, you know, I think of Crystal right now. One of my, I mean, and you know, Crystal, yep. you know, you know, Crystal. And I mean, she and her husband within 12 months, less than 12 months of us working together, made over a million dollars, you know, and that's not out of the ordinary. So we discovered what our passion is as far as actually working with people, you know, like you have, Chaffee. But anyway, nonetheless, let's dive in, Chaffee. My lands, sure. uh, we, we made them wait long enough. Let's let's dive in. Of course, we you know, we got the free online class we've given everybody. But let's let's talk about uh, let's talk about what we got on the for the show today. So so Jay again I go back to you know wh why do you love private money so much? What's what's the primary reason why you love using private money? <laughs> for your deals? Well, putting aside, I don't rely on banks, mortgage companies like I used to. My favorite reason for using private money, of course, what I just talked about is control. Everybody wants to be in control, right? Everybody wants to feel like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm at least in the majority in the control of my destiny. Putting that aside, my favorite reason to use private money, Chaffee, is because I receive multiple checks on every deal, multiple checks on every deal. And what I mean by that is I don't have to take any money to the closing when I purchase and invest in a property. And I tell you what. When I was borrowing money from the banks and the mortgage companies for real estate investing, there weren't no such thing as receiving multiple checks. I received one check back then, and that's when I sold a property, right? Right, because usually when you go to the closing table to buy a property, you got to put in 3 5 10 20% down, depending on the deal. Absolutely, absolutely. And so, you know, in this wonderful world of private money, which again is just doing business with individuals, in this world of private money, we don't bring any money to the closing table of our own and we receive multiple checks. So walk us through how you receive those multiple checks or what those multiple checks are, Jay. Sure. So the first check that you receive is when you buy the property. I mean, who wants to get paid to buy properties? <laughs> <laughs> and not bring any of your money to the table. So, so the first the first check is. Let's see. What do you think would be better for folks to understand that have never heard this process? Give them the, give them the times that they get the checks, and then talk about each one. Or do we just want to talk about each one as we go through it? We'll just we'll talk about each one, and then we can do a quick review. Cool. So the first check you receive is when you buy the property. 
So I'm sure the first question, Chaffee, is, okay, how does that work? How right. do I How does that work? <laughs> How do I receive a check when I buy the property and bring no money to the closing table? It's very simple. We always borrow more money than required to buy the property. So wait a minute. Who's going to loan me more money than I need to purchase the property? And how are they secure in doing that? So obviously we're doing this with individuals. Right. Doing it private lenders, individuals, just like us. So, so let me just use an example here. Let's, let's, let's take this hypothetical house that we're going to buy. Okay. Let's see you and I are in business together, Chappie, and we're going to go buy this house. Now let's say this house has got an after repaired value of $200,000. So let's first define what is after repaired value. In the business, we call it ARV, A-R-V, after repair value. So we may be buying this house. Well, let's just say, let's say we're buying this house for $100,000, 50% of the after repair value. Now, Chaffee, we're going to have to do another episode and talk about where we find houses at 50%. Absolutely. <laughs> of the That's after repair value. Pretty good deal, Jay. <laughs> say what? That sounds like a pretty good deal, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So let me just let me just say, I buy most of our properties at no more than fifty percent of the after repair value. So assuming you know how to find that deal, we're going to buy this after repair value two hundred thousand dollar house for a hundred thousand dollars. Now, let's say the repairs, right? Let's say the repairs on this house, let's say it needs rehab. By the way, folks, typically you're not going to buy a house 50% of the after repaired value unless it needs rehab. That's right. Okay. All right. So let's say the repairs on this house, Chaffee, are $30,000. Okay. $30,000. Now, in this world of private money, when we do business with a private lender, they not only are willing to give us 100% of purchase price, but they will also, in a lot of cases, give us 100% of the rehab money up front. So that check that I'm walking away from the closing table when I buy, I'm getting the overage. Oh, Jeffrey, let me tell you, my favorite phrase, my favorite phrase that I see on my real estate attorney's check stubs when I pick up a check, in fact, just today, we picked up a $32,000 check today, all right, from buying this property. Mm -hmm. And so the phrase is called excess cash to close. <laughs> I love excess cash, right? <laughs> excess cash to close. So I'm buying it for 100000 100, Rehab is, say, 30000 in this example we're talking about. Okay. Now, let's say, I mean, you know, there's always marketing costs. There's carrying costs. You know, there's utilities, there's et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, until we get that house cash flowing right. or sold. We might sell it on rent to own, uh, lease purchase, you know. We might sell it on cash out, put it in the multiple listing service, whatever. So in that case, I'd say I want to borrow $140,000 on that deal. So I'll borrow $140,000 from the private lender. Private lender wires their funds to the real estate attorney's trust account. Okay. I buy the house. So I got $40,000 left over because the purchase price was a hundred grand. Right. So that's 40,000 excess cash. Right. Yes. right? <laughs> now, there's a, now there's a little bit that would come out of that $40,000 and that would be my real estate attorney's fees, okay. you know, okay. title search, you know, document preparation. So I might bring home $39,500 on this deal. Okay. So am I straight so far, Chaffee? We know where we are. Let me just uh, make a point though, that that 140,000 is still less than the 75% of the ARV, correct? Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So the maximum that we borrow 
And then the warm market people that we're doing business with in the warm market, you know, we got some kind of relationship with them. We have to take care of our private lenders because in the warm market, they loan to us 100% of the after repaired value. We got to look after them. So in this example, when the after repaired value is 200 grand, the most we would borrow is $150,000 from the private lender. In this example, we're borrowing 140 and I'm bringing home 39,500 after, you know, attorney's fees. There's the first check. So we're straight on the first check. Yep. Yep. Okay. Now, second check. If you as the real estate investor sell this house, if, if, if we, we've done this deal, we're going to sell this house on rent to own. Well, what are we going to collect? We're going to collect a non-refundable option fee. Some real estate investors call it a lease option deposit. The legal term is actually an option fee. And so second check we receive, we may get like a $10,000, $15,000, option fee from the buyer of this house. Now, that's the second check. Let's hang out on that check for a second, Chaffee. That check. That check is our check that we receive. Now, what's going to happen in the future? Well, that money is accounted for one of two ways. If the rent-to-own buyer does not cash out, then that's a forfeited option fee that we now bring in as income, all right? Or we help them get ready for a mortgage, which we do. 80% of our rent to own buyers, we cash out because we hold their hand in the credit repair program. And so now when they're ready for a mortgage, we apply that option fee to their closing cost or down payment or purchase price. So we're straight on the second check. Yes. Option fee from a uh, rent to own. Yes. And then finally, the third check is when we actually cash out on the house. Okay. All right. So what I mean by cashing out on the house is either that rent to own buyer bought it or, and they got mortgage ready, or we put it in the multiple listing service right up front and we cash out. And now the check we receive now in this wonderful world of private money is the difference between what we sell it for and what is still owed to the prince or to the private lender. So in our example, I borrowed $140,000. So you and I were doing $40,000 from the private lender. Okay. Right. We sell it for 200,000. That's the after repaired value. Of course, this market is so hot as of this show, then we're selling for full appraisal price. Or if you sell on rent to own, you can actually price it for more. Than the appraisal price. So the check we're going to get is the difference between what we sell it for, 200000 Of course, if a realtor is helping us sell it, their fee is going to come out of it. And since we pay and accrue interest only payments to the private lender, we still owe the private lender the $140,000. So we're going to get a $60,000 check in this example mm -hmm. when we sell the property because we sell it for 200, we still owe 140. Now, I got a real important point to make, but are we clear on the third check first? So, yes. So, the third check is when you sell the property and you take the profits that you made from that property. Yeah. So, first check when you buy, mm -hmm. difference between what you borrow and what you bought it for. Second check if you sell it on rent to own. Third check when you cash out. But, Chaffee, I, I want everybody to get this point big time. Obviously, we don't get to keep the $40,000 check and the $10,000 check and the $60,000 check, right? Because right. that initial check we're, you, we're getting, we're using for the rehab. We don't want to borrow that kind of money if there's not rehab, you know. Right. And, uh, however, in the wonderful world of private money, you can pull equity out at any time. For your business, if your business needs cash flow or whatever, that's another reason because, you know, the private lenders are so easy and flexible to work with. So um, how you want to give that any more color on receiving multiple checks? Because I know we're getting towards the end of the show. Sure. So just to review real quick, the, then you have a check when you 
buy the property, which most people don't know how to do in the first place. So most people actually go to closing and have to bring money to the table. And then you get a check when you sell lease option or rent to own, you get a check then. And then when you sell and you get some of your profits, you you get a check. So that's three checks, correct? That's it. That's it. All right. All right. That's a good, that was a good question for the show. So Chaffee, as we always offer to our listeners and those that are tuning in, we cover some mindset, cover some uh, personal development uh, ideas and strategies. So let's see here. I know you don't know what the question is that's coming. So I'm just going to, I'm going to pick, I'm going to pick. i tell you what, let's, let's talk about this for a moment because this is near and dear to my heart as well. And by the way, Chavi, I've never asked you this question. Okay. Uh oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm in nine years. In nine years, I've never asked you this question. So I'm really going to be interested to hear your answer. And since I know what the question is, I already know what my answer is. So, <laughs> so here's the question. Here's the question. If you could only, and I know you're a, I know you're a mindset freak. I mean, you you've been studying this thing for decades, like, like I have as well. So if you could only boil it down to three books, three books that have made the most difference in your life personally from a personal development, personal growth mindset standpoint, what would be your top three? Well, I tell you, uh, my top one, hands down, uh, personally, is a book uh, by a gentleman named Napoleon Hill. And this uh, book is called Think and Grow Rich. And, I, I, you know, it's one of those books I think you got to be ready for because there are uh, a lot of there's a lot of information in there. There's a ton of information that really just is just jam packed in there. I call it the entrepreneur's Bible. If uh, you're in entrepreneurship, if you're in your own business, the information that is contained in this book is phenomenal. The author did 20 years of research for this book, and he this was written in the early 1900s, so about 100 years ago, and it still applies today. So the concepts in there are so powerful. There's 13 principles of success in that book, and the story behind the book is, is phenomenal as well. So that's my number one hands down book that I think everybody needs to read. Chaffee, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to catch you off. <laughs> let's say let's save your other two for the next two podcasts. Let's do Sounds one good. book per podcast. <laughs> Sounds good. And, uh, and so I, I like I like and hey, I, I agree with you. I remember I, I mean I was in my twenties. I was in my twenties when I came across Think and Grow Rich. Big game changer for me. I mean it was huge. Not don't have time to tell the story right now, but my book that I mean. I was going through a period in my life in my early 20s that was not very pretty. I was I was young and dumb and stupid and I'm still growing. <laughs> but but I was going through a period in my life that was very very dark, very dark. I had my wake up call when I was really almost 24 years old, like 23 years and 9 months old. And I mentioned in a previous podcast about being in the restaurant business. And so I mean, I had no friends. I had, uh, I mean, God was not in my life. I had no relationships of any meaning. And so I thought one day, I said, you know what? There's got to be a better way. <laughs> I just want to start over. I, you know, you know, everybody from the past that used to love me, please give me a second chance. You know, I've like screwed up and I admit it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I went on this search. I went on this search of how to just start everything over. And so the first book that I devoured was University of Success by Og Mandino. University of Success by Og Mandino. It's still in print. In fact, they just had, I don't know, 25 year, whatever, you know, celebration or uh, anniversary of the book. So they got a new updated version out. But I mean, like you said a moment ago on a, you know, they can grow rich. The principles and the concepts, just like the Bible, they never change. Right. Never change. And so uh, anyway, anyway, that's my book. Anyway, Chavi, thank you again. Thank you again for joining me here on the podcast, man. You got any parting thoughts and comments before we before we call this show a wrap? Yeah, the parting thoughts are subscribe, 
rate and comment <laughs> for this podcast so you get more great information. <laughs> and definitely check out that uh, the, the online training that you have. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, one more time, everybody. And that is go to www.jayconner, J A Y C O N N E R dot com forward slash money podcast to really dive deep quickly on how to get the funding for your deals. So, with that, folks, I want to thank you for joining us here on the Jay Conner Show. Chaffee, I know I've already invited you to be on the next episode. Awesome. So, folks, uh, tune in for the, for the next episode coming around very, very shortly. And so, until we see you or talk with you here on the next show, here's to taking your business and your personal success to the next level. We love you guys. Bye for now. Bye for now.